Jesus is King. Welcome to the Guild Family Stream. This week's edition, Pilgrimage to St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, St. Paul is dedicated to obviously the Blessed Apostle, and it just so happens that I am at the same time finishing the Bible reading. If you're in the Fellowship of St. Anthony, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but in the Fellowship of St. Anthony, we are completing the liturgical Bible reading in a year plan uh, as an optional addition. <clears throat> but I have to finish all of my Pauline epistles. God willing, I'll be able to finish them this weekend. Um, the admin vice president of Meaning of Catholic Stephen Juno has graciously arranged a talk for me to give in St. Paul, Minneapolis. And as a, a wise person once told me, when a family man goes on a business trip, he a good thing is to treat it treat it like a retreat. So, to, um, well, I mean, take advantage of the time, basically, <clears throat> so that this can be a pilgrimage to the city of St. Paul on the weekend of the Pauline epistles, finish all the, read all the St. Paul epistles. Um, in two weeks, we'll have Sexagesima Sunday, which is a very Pauline Sunday of the, of the Roman Rite. The, the collect beseeches our Lord for graces by means of the teacher of the Gentiles, i.e. St. Paul. And the epistle is one of the most epic uh, selections from the Pauline epistles, which is when St. Paul berates the Corinthians uh, with sarcasm and it's it's kind of a funny passage but also an epic passage because of what he tells them um, St. Paul he, he really cuts to the heart so much that's what I love about the writings of St. Paul <clears throat> he is of a very sanguine and choleric temperament he's very much a sanguine choleric we were just talking about this in the guild chat about how we were talking about Ratzinger and Lefebvre and how Ratzinger seems to have been very much melancholic, phlegmatic, um, quite the opposite of Archbishop Lefebvre, who seems to have been probably a choleric sanguine, is, is my estimation. And uh, as uh, our, as our, um, as Meaning of Catholic members Avoiding Babylon have discussed on their channel the importance of the temperaments is hard to overestimate. So, uh, St. Paul very much <laughs> he's got the temperament of Archbishop Lefebvre. Anyways, or Archbishop Lefebvre's got the temperament of St. Paul, perhaps. St. Paul has a certain he seems more sanguine, though, than choleric. Very sanguine. But his, his, uh, his sort of extravagant rhetoric is shown in this particular epistle on Sexagesima Sunday. Um, so I'm going on a pilgrimage to St. Paul, Minneapolis. I'm really excited because I don't really know much about St. Paul, but we're going to learn about it together on this pilgrimage. And uh, guild members will also have access to the entire talk that I will give. The, the title of the talk is... Joseph Ratzinger and the fourth Greco-Roman renewal. And this is based on my book, City of God vs. City of Man. Uh, and uh, I, I'm really happy how the talk turned out because I, it, it helped me develop this one of the central theses of the book, namely the the tension and doctrinal development in history between the moderate party and the strict party. 
And what I realized was that the moderate party is really the Greek instinct of Christendom, whereas the strict party is really the Roman instinct of Christendom. And there is this Greco-Roman instinct of Christendom that comes from Greco-Roman civilization, culture, and is vivified by Logos incarnate by means of the Hebrew revelation. There's, there's this fantastic passage that I found from E. Michael Jones from my favorite work of his, which is Logos Rising, where he quotes uh, another author and says that um, Pontius Pilate he inadvertently prophesies Pontius Pilate when he proclaims the king of the Jews in three languages, namely Greek, Roman, and um, Hebrew. He proclaims the, the very essence of Christend, uh, the culture of Christendom, which is Hebraic Greco-Roman. And so he proclaims inadvertently the universality of Christendom and the potency of Christendom by means of vivifying the Greco-Roman civilization. So um, the talk that I'm going to give develops the ideas that I tried to work out in my book, drawing upon Augustine and Christopher Dawson, and uh, tries to place Joseph Ratzinger's legacy within this framework of a, a, a very broad picture of the entire history of the church of 2,000 years. Um, so my only concern is that the talk will draw too long and 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 uh, will be too long. So hopefully, hopefully I can get it in an hour, if not 45 minutes. We'll see. It's my first time doing a parish talk like this. Now, let's talk about St. Paul... Minneapolis. So this, now I'm going to speak to my children because they're going to watch this video as a part of uh, me teaching them about uh, where I just went this weekend. Uh, so monkeys, we've talked about how our French forefathers came, Samuel de Champlain, came to the New World, bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Indians, and especially the good Indians, the Huron, and other such nations, but they fought with the bad Indians, the Iroquois nation, the Iroquois empire. They sailed up the St. Lawrence River, they settled Michigan, and they brought the gospel to Michigan and they helped all the, the good Indians. They helped them because the these Indians wanted help against the Iroquois, uh, like the Mishimagea Indians, from whom Michigan gets its name, or the Illinois Indians. Uh, and we talked about how Pierre Marquette, our uncon uncanonized but incorrupt saint of Michigan, Pierre Marquette, went down the Mississippi. He was the first one to explore the Mississippi back in the 1670s, 200 years before Magdalene Laframboise came to West Michigan. Around the time of Magdalene Laframboise, when the Anglos were taking over Michigan, there were also some of our French forefathers who were settling up the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River is the longest river in the United States, all the way from Minnesota, all the way down to the great Catholic city of New Orleans, down in Louisiana, which empties into the Gulf of Mexico. So it's the longest river in the United States. And that's the river that Père Marquette explored and you remember he went down and he he encountered the demon. The Indians were so scared that they were going down the great river because they told him that there was that demon. Remember the demon? The demon in the Mississippi was that whirlpool that was 
killing the Indians because the Indians didn't have good canoes, but the Frenchmen had better canoes, so they were able to get past the whirlpool on the Mississippi. And Père Marquette used his calumet, his pipe, to win over the Indians with a peace pipe. So that's the other story we've talked about that. So, but up Mississippi, further up, north of where Père Marquette started his journey in Wisconsin, further up is the modern day state of Minnesota. And our forefathers from France settled around this region way up north in Minnesota in the present day of St. Paul, Minnesota. That's where we're going right now. St. Paul, Minnesota was named by French priest Father Lucien Geltier and Father Geltier named it after St. Paul. St. Paul was the apostle who spread Jesus Christ throughout the Roman Empire and wrote a bunch of the epistles of the New Testament. So, over in Minnesota, and that's where uh, Père Marquette had, Père Marquette had traveled in his canoe through the, through the Superior all the way to the Apostle Islands. The Apostle Islands are in present day Wisconsin. I think that their name, they may be named after him, but that was the, that was when he first learned about the Illinois tribe and the, and the great river Mississippi. But that region is right next to Minnesota. And that region is right here on the map. And um, this is the region of the great Sioux Indians. So over in Michigan and in Ontario area, that's where the Iroquois Empire was. But the big, huge, powerful Indian Empire in, the, in this area was the Sioux. The Sioux, the Dakota and Lakota branch of the Sioux in this area was the big Sioux Empire. The Sioux were fighting against the other Indians called the Ojibwa before our forefathers arrived. And when Father Geltier founded St. Paul and named it after St. Paul, he built St. Peter's Church. And in this church, he taught the Indians to sing in the Sioux tongue. So he, he, used, he made Indian hymns in the Sioux language, just like our forefather St. Jean de Brebeuf did with the Huron tongue with the famous Huron carol. We, we sang that, if you remember, on Christmas Day. Yezu ahatonya, ahatonya, Yezu ahatonya. That was the Huron carol that we sang. Twas in the noon of winter time when all the plants was fed. And dun 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 man it to good angel choirs instead. I wish I knew the words by heart, but I don't. So, Father Geltier taught the Sioux Catholics, the Sioux Indian Catholics of St. Paul, Minnesota, to sing in the Sioux tongue. He he's the one who founded the city of St. Paul and the first church of the region, St. Peter's. So we're going to try to get to St. Peter's Church. Hopefully we can get to that today. I don't know if it'll be open on a Friday afternoon, but we'll see. But we are going to go to the St. Paul Cathedral. So, if you want the rest of this story, this pilgrimage, you want the talk, everything else, all the history, you have to become a guild member. The guild supports Meaning of Catholic. It helps me pay my bills and feed the mouths I have to feed. It helps the volunteers, the uh, other authors who are published through Our Lady of Victory Press. It helps Meaning of Catholic expand and you get extra content. So, if you want the rest of this story, go to patreon.com slash meaningofcatholic, meaningofcatholic.com slash donate. God bless.